You know, J.P. Morgan once said, and I mean the man J.P. Morgan, only gold is real money. Everything else is credit. Well, that was way over 100 years or so ago. Let's see what the current J.P. Morgan is doing. Coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer. But really what we love to do the most is to help you create a strategy based on your own circumstances and what you're trying to accomplish. And I've got to tell you, it, and I've told you this before and I'll just keep repeating myself, never has it been more important than it is right now for you to have your strategy and plan because those in power do and those in power have the ability to hide a lot of things from you. So you can't just take their word for it. Let's look at this case in point. Card lenders show faith in U.S. consumer as they hunt for new borrowers. Interesting because we are in a technical recession and yet let's big card issuers step up marketing efforts despite the economy slipping into a technical recession and the cards haven't been doing too bad themselves this is from the federal reserve and these are consumer consumer loans so it's credit cards and all revolving credit and as you can clearly see it is much higher today than it was before the pandemic hit in 2020 but they need more because this is a debt based system and it requires more debt to keep everything running and the banks are great at that let's see you know what did what did jp morgan say only gold is real money everything else is credit well chase has become uh, the main player in the credit card industry after rising 47% in the first quarter, the volume of paper and digital mail solicitations sent by U.S. credit card issuers increased again in the second quarter. Wow. Putting it on track to reach a record high this year. Because they already have the calculations in there for those that don't pay their cards and look at the level of interest that they get to charge, even when they had the ability to borrow that money at 0% from our Federal Reserve. They still gouged when it came to interest rates. J.P. Morgan Chase, the largest U.S. card issuer, blamed high customer acquisition costs for a 45% fall in second quarter card profits. Do you get that? That means that it's costing more and more money to get you to hold on and use their credit card. And wow, a 45% fall in second quarter pro card profits, all because it costs more money to get new card buy, new card holders and users. The increase in marketing activity is particularly noteworthy at this stage of the economic cycle. During uncertain times, lenders typically send out fewer card offers. They pull back, they tighten their belts, they tighten their credit. But interestingly enough that that is not happening now. An increase in marketing activity is particularly noteworthy because of where we are. Many of the marketing efforts are targeting so-called revolvers, or borrowers who carry a balance from month to month instead of paying their statements off in full. And remember, we've had this conversation. Fixed rate debt, there are opportunities in this environment for fixed rate debt. But what they're talking about here is variable rate debt. And that can kill you. But they want those people that don't have the ability or don't choose to pay off their cards every month. They just carry that balance and pay all that very high interest. 
You do not want revolving credit and credit card debt going into the hyperinflation. I'm telling you, because you never get out of debt. During the first quarter, there was a 62% increase in the volume of balance transfer offers that would enable consumers to consolidate debt on a credit card interest fee for a time. So all of these different things that they're doing to get you to use their credit card, the terms are also getting more generous. The interest-free period rose on average to 16 months this year from 14 months in 2021. Is that going to get elongated even more in their efforts to get you in debt and keep you in debt? Because they make money off of those credit cards, no doubt about it, on that very high debt. But if you have credit card debt currently, or you're taking on debt for a large upcoming purchase, interest rates are high, they're getting higher, and it can spiral out of control pretty quickly. Because if you make your minimums, the chances are you are not even paying all the interest on the credit cards. And so now that interest, just like our government, right? They don't pay all the interest on all of the debt. So therefore it goes into the principal and you are now paying interest on interest, compounding that interest. So getting out of credit card debt, quite honestly, we are at that point where that's what you want to do. You don't want to be taking on new credit card debt. You don't want to be a revolver that keeps just having to pay that high interest, roll it over, roll it over. This is the time to get into a position where you are as self-sufficient and independent as possible. Fixed rate debt, I've talked about before, that's another story. But, you know, they lie and they lie and then they lie some more. So JP Morgan Gold Dex spoofing cheated market. Now, this happened over such a long period of time, I don't even know that anybody that got cheated, meaning you and me, right? Because if we're buying gold and we're buying silver and we're like, oh, these markets aren't doing anything, what? I mean, why do you still believe Wall Street? They're going to paint the picture that they want you to see so that they can benefit from it. And oh, by the way, I gotta tell you, you need to be subscribed if you wanna get this kind of content because it's important for you to know this. Ignorance doesn't make you immune. It just leaves you vulnerable. Traders did whatever it takes to make money. They don't care about the impact of the markets on you or me. All they care about is making money because that's how they they get paid. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But JP Morgan Trader spoofed so fast, colleagues Colleagues urged ice on fingers. And these are spoofing is where you put in an order and you cancel it. And it's just that fast. It's immediate, right? So it moves the market the way that they want it to move the market. Lots more sell orders than we see gold and silver dump. Lots more buy our orders than we see it go up. But this is about spoofing and manipulating the market. And they got caught and they did it. From 2008 to, well, in this piece anyway, 2018. Do you think they've stopped? We'll talk about that in just a second. But this business, meaning JP Morgan, made more than $100 million each year from 2008. Did they have incentive to keep this going? You betcha they did. Defendant's compensation drew gasps from the Chicago jury. But in summary, the business is a consistent meaning gold. The gold business is a consistent moneymaker for JP Morgan, notching up annual profits between 109 million and 234 million a year between 2008 and 2018. And I bet you it's longer than that, but okay. The lion's share of that comes from trading. So that's spoofing selling it, buying it back in financial markets. But the bank does plenty of physical business as well. Trading and transporting physical precious metals makes the bank about $30 million a year on average. So look, I, I just want to point something out here. Uh, the annual prof- 
profits from trading the gold and silver derivative contracts were between 109 million and 234 million because it takes a whole lot less. It's all leverage. So where they can lock in for 150 bucks and control 500 now 500 ounces of gold, right? It's easier to make those trading profits when all you're doing is trading paper and you can make it look like however you want it to make. Whenever you get into the physical arena, it requires something. It requires storage. It requires transportation. So you can see they make a lot less money, 30 million on a year on average versus 234 million right? Paper is so much easier and cheaper and it's so much easier to leverage. And that works until it doesn't. And I make this point because that whole paper derivative gold market and silver as well is going to unravel. You want to be holding the physical when it does because that's when they're going to ultimately have to reset and restructure this entire system, though a lot of that is going on right now. JP Morgan holds tens of billions of dollars in gold in vaults in London, New York, and Singapore. It is one of four, only four clearing members of the London market where global gold prices are set by buying and selling metal held in a few London vaults, including JP Morgan's and the Bank of England's. And uh, may I remind you that in Basel III, there were supposed to be changes to these contracts of gold versus the physical gold, but didn't happen because there was just a waiver that was given to these bullion banks because of the implosion or explosion that this whole piece unraveling is going to, to make happen. So they didn't eliminate that. They just postponed that. And, and that may be coming to a close soon. I don't know. Time will tell. But another important, another set of important clients were central banks. So you've got hedge funds, et cetera, but you also have those central banks which trade gold for their reserves, which trade gold to manipulate the price, though many, many, many global central banks are accumulating gold now. But you would think that that would have an impact on what you see, except it can't because of all the, that paper gold. So another set of important clients were central banks, which trade gold for their reserves and are among the biggest players in the bullion market. Mm-hmm. At least 10 central banks held their metal and vaults run by J.P. Morgan in 2010. And guess what? 40% of all transactions in the gold market were cleared by J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan has their fingers and their hands in everything, whether they're derivatives or they're physical. But remember what the founder, J.P. Morgan, said? Only gold is money. Everything else is credit. So JP Morgan, the bank today needs to have their hands in all of that gold, whether they're a trustee for the GLD and the other gold and silver ETFs, SLV, but they are the ones that have access to that. If you own a share of GLD or SLV, all you have are shares in a trust. And these things were designed to follow the spot market, which is so easy to manipulate. And we're seeing that now that it's been revealed, but hey, it wasn't revealed forever. Oh, of course, no, we would never do such a thing. Garbage. So this is the money that was made. And you can see here's the 234 million. These are all the gold profits, the profits from trading in both gold and silver. They, their pay was linked to the profits they made for the bank. So the, these bank employees. Rufo, the bank's hedge fund salesman, was paid 10.5 million from 2008 to 2016. Smith, the top gold trader, got 9.9 .9 million, and Noack, their boss, made the most of all 23.7 million over the same period why would they not do it? 
It was basically, it was a gift. But who's the one that suffered from it? This is not a victimless crime. Anybody that was trying to accumulate gold and silver for their protection during this period of time, and before that, I mean, openly central banks have admitted to manipulating the price of gold because they want you to stay away from it. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't believe their lies. None of this, none of the spot markets, none of it reflects the true fundamental value of a piece of gold, of an ounce of gold. That will become apparent when the overnight reset occurs. And this, I've shown you this recently. It's the most, it's, it's from the most current report from the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency on derivatives in the FDIC insured banks. And what you're looking at here are the gold derivatives. And you notice this big, huge spike right here. That was, you may recall if you saw that video, if not, um, Edgar, you wanna put the link to that when I, when I talked about the OCC report, okay? So the only thing that really happened is that they changed how they had to account for these, for the precious metals. That's it, it's an, they don't change behavior. They change the accounting of the behavior so that they can make it look like however they want it to look. Don't believe them. They will lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. What I know that most other people don't really know is that this is 100% not one little doubt in my mind. The end of this current experiment, period. And I tell you that because number one, there's virtually no purchasing power left in the currency. It only has any value at all because you're still willing to work for it and you're still willing to barter with it. You have to barter with it. You don't have a choice. But there's still some little level of confidence because when they started this whole game, they knew that people do not understand. They marry the legal money of the state and they don't understand inflation. And that's how they've gotten away with it all this time. But if you've been watching me, then quite, quite frankly, you should understand that this is all a lie, even if you don't understand it fully. And Edgar, can I see that question, please? Yeah. Oh, by the way, I heard that I did have, didn't see it, but I did hear that there was an obituary on me. I'm here and I'm alive and I'm going to answer VD's question. Okay, so I don't even know what the point of saying that is. And by the way, just so you guys know, I think I'm going to be here till I'm 100 and I'm only 67, so I got a ways to go. But in the past, you stated that the laws were changed so that fixed mortgage rates are no longer fixed. Could you repeat if possible? Okay, what they actually did, it depends on this, it's gonna depend on the state and it's not that the fixed rate mortgages are no longer fixed. So you could be talking about two different things I've talked about in the past. So how about if I just cover them both, okay? Um, number one, when the mortgage and the real estate market imploded back in 2008, a lot of states went in and they modified the um, underlying documents. You know, those big fat mortgage documents that you sign when you buy the house and all that little fine print. So in that fine print, what it actually did was give the holder of that mortgage, so JP Morgan Chase, if that's where your mortgage is, the right to change uh, from one interest rate benchmark, the LIBOR, to another interest rate benchmark, in this case, the SOFR, but the SOFR probably wasn't named in that contract yet, uh, although it might have been. So I didn't say that there were no more fixed rate mortgages. I'm saying that they have now the legal ability to convert your mortgage that's tied to LIBOR to, tie, to being tied to SOFR. Additionally, this is not true in all states, so you'd have to look uh, inside the, and find out if this is true. But in some states, 
Uh, if you default on your mortgage, they have the right to attach any other assets that you have in order to pay that debt. So I'm not really sure, and, and, and VD, if that wasn't it yet, let Edgar know and he'll put it up. But those were basically the two things and what's gonna ultimately ha end up happening. If you remember what happened in 2008 and those people that were so underwater, but they wanted to hold on to their houses and they restructured their mortgage documents. And honestly, it wasn't in anybody's best interest, but the banks, that's who really benefited the most from it. So coming into the future, that's when we would see that again for those mortgages that, uh, that were, that do not have the ability to change. Well, they all have the ability to change from LIBOR to SOFR because that was written into all of the, the fine print. Uh, we got to make sure that the banks come out whole forget the little people. I mean, we're all just about the right size to fail, but, um, you know, banks are not. So if that is, um, uh, different than what you were thinking, let me know and I'll try and figure out exactly what you're referring to. And, uh, David B asks, are you seeing water shortage in Arizona? I know it's a desert. Well, the answer is yes. We've actually been in drought for, I think maybe about 12 years now which is really what makes rain catchment and water catchment so critical in the desert because they can easily turn off, you know, and turn down the water. In fact, I'll be doing some things on the BGS channel on, um, on, on what they plan on doing and how they plan on managing the water, just like their plan to manage the energy, which gives them the ability to control how much, if any, that you get of water or energy or when you get it, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I'm glad that my bug out house is completely off grid and I'm not going to be dependent upon, well, I'm not dependent upon any power provider or water provider, because I think we're going to find some things are not so great uh, when they take full control of that. But if you haven't already, stay tuned. Uh, and I, for this week's headline news, that is actually coming out on Thursday, right? Uh, on the Fed's neutral stance, because aren't you glad? They didn't know where neutral was in May, but boy, they got a strong handle on it right now. Yeah, it makes me feel all, all warm and cozy knowing that they're in the driver's seat for this mess. And lastly, make sure that you watch yesterday's video on our Beyond Gold and Silver channel, where I visited the Vizcaya Museum and the gardens in Miami. It was wonderful when I was out there doing the George Gammon event, and we were in awe of the place. And you know, we had gone there the prior year too, but you know, having a personal tour was absolutely amazing. And the gardens once fed like 40% of the population of Miami and Dade County actually during the Great Depression. So this is really, I, I loved it. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. And if you haven't done so already, and I hope you have, but if you haven't set up your strategy, you need to click that Calendly link below and make a time to sit down and talk to one of our consultants and they can help you develop your personal strategy, which will basically be the same as mine, just kind of tweaked for your personal circumstances. But if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that button. We'll let you know when we're going live, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up and share, share, share because it is absolutely a hundred bazillion percent time to make sure that you have your strategy in place so you can sleep well at night, just get it done. Then you don't have to worry about it. And until next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.